Hello students, today we are going to discuss about foundations part 3 which is about deep foundations. Deep foundations are those in which the depth of the foundation is very large in comparison to its width and it is not constructed by ordinary methods of open pit excavation like the shallow foundation. The different types of deep foundation are pile foundation, sphere foundation, caisson or well foundation and copper dam. Pile foundation. The term pile foundation denotes a construction for the foundation of a wall or pier which is supported on piles. It is used where the stratum of required bearing capacity is at greater depth. The advantages of using pile foundation are it provides a common solution to all difficult foundation site problems. It can be used for any type of structure and in any type of soil. The different types of piles based on function are load bearing piles and non load bearing piles. Load bearing piles are further divided into end bearing piles and friction piles or skin friction piles and non load bearing piles are divided into sheet piles, anchor piles, batter piles, fender piles, compaction piles. Load bearing piles. End bearing piles transfer the load through bearing on a hard stratum. It is driven into the ground until a hard stratum is reached. For this, hard strata should be available at a reasonable depth. It acts as pillars supporting the superstructure and transmitting the load to the ground. Friction piles are floating piles. They transfer the load through friction between the pile and soil. The length of the pile will depend on the frictional resistance. Piles are driven at a site where soil is weak or soft to a considerable depth. It is not economical or rather possible to rest the bottom of the pile on the hard stratum. Non-load bearing piles. Sheet piles. They are used for the following purposes. To construct retaining wall in docks and other marine work. To protect erosion of river banks. To retain the sides of foundation trenches. Anchor piles are used to provide anchorage against horizontal pulling forces. They resist uplift or inclined tensile forces. Anchor piles can transfer both compressive and tensile forces as well as bending moments to the ground. Batter piles. These piles are driven at an inclination to resist large horizontal and inclined forces. Fender piles. These piles are used to protect concrete decks or other waterfront structures from the abrasion or impact caused from the ships or barges. Compaction piles. When piles are driven in granular soil with the aim of increasing the bearing capacity of soil, the piles are termed as compaction piles. The different types of piles based on materials are timber piles, concrete piles, composite piles, steel piles, cast iron piles and sand piles. Timber piles. In timber piles, the transmission of load takes place by the frictional resistance of ground and the pile surface. The advantages of using timber piles are it is economical where timber is easily available and can be driven rapidly and as such saves time. Disadvantages of using timber piles are they are liable to decay or deteriorate by salt, water and insects. They have low bearing capacity. Concrete piles. Concrete piles are of three types. Precast piles, cast in situ piles and pre-stressed concrete piles. 
precast piles and pre-stressed concrete piles are similar. The main difference between them are that in pre-stressed concrete piles, the reinforcement is stressed before the concreting is done. The advantages of using precast and pre-stressed piles are they are very effective. Simple quality control improves the entire area. Disadvantages of precast and pre-stressed piles are they are limited in length, difficult to transport, not suitable for densely built up area. The advantages of cast in situ concrete piles are they are not limited in length, can be cast at any place, requires less equipment. The disadvantages of using cast in situ concrete piles are quality control is difficult, load carrying is mostly done to end bearing only. Skin frictional resistance is very low. Composite piles. Piles of two different materials are driven one over the other so as to enable them to act together to perform the function of a single pile. As you can see from the figure, this composite pile has a concrete portion at the top and timber portion at the bottom. This type of composite pile is used with the object of achieving economy in the cost of piling work. Steel piles, the different types are pipe piles, edge piles, screw piles, disc piles. Causes of failure of piles. The main causes are unequal settlement of the subsoil. Unequal settlement of the masonry. Horizontal movement of the soil adjoining to the structure. Shrinkage due to the withdrawal of moisture from the soil below the foundation. Lateral pressure tending to overturn the structure. Action of atmosphere. Lateral escape of soil below the foundation. So out of the different types of deep foundation, till now we have seen the different types of pile foundation. Next is pier foundation. A pier foundation consists of a cylindrical column of large diameter to support and transfer large superimposed load to the firm strata below. The difference between pile foundation and pier foundation lies in the method of construction. So let's see some of the difference between the pile and pier foundation. So they differ in the method of construction. Though pile foundation transfer the load through friction or bearing, pier foundation transfer the load only through bearing. Generally, pier foundation is shallower in depth than the pile foundation. Pier foundation is preferred in location where the top strata consists of decomposed rock overlying a strata of sound rock. In such a condition, it becomes difficult to drive the bearing piles through the decomposed rock. In the case of stiff clay, which offer large resistance to the driving of bearing pile, pier foundation can be conveniently constructed. Third type of deep foundation is caisson or well foundation. Caissons are water tight structures made of wood, steel or reinforced concrete constructed in connection with excavation for foundation of bridges, piers, abutments in river and lake dock structure for shore protection etc. The caisson remains in its pores and ultimately becomes a integral part of the permanent structure. Kofer dams, they may be defined as a temporary structure constructed in a river or a lake or any other water bearing surface for excluding water from a given site to enable the building operation to be performed on dry surface. So as you can see from the figure, the structure or the kofer dam, it prevents the entry of 
water inside the particular structure so that the construction can be done within the structure. So that's all about the different types of deep foundation. Thank you.